In this section, we will create the piping model geometry. We can create our piping model with all of the different piping components available in AutoPipe. This includes pipe runs, bends, tees, reducers, valves, flanges, anchors, supports, flexible joints, nozzles, extra data, and beams. It is important to go through the dialog boxes by tabbing from input to input to ensure that everything is filled out correctly and completely. A hint is that if you're starting a new segment or changing the direction of the pipe, like after a bend or after a T, you want to change the offset inputs. And then you can tab to have the program automatically update the length field. If you're adding a component that will continue in the same direction as the previous component, all you need to do is simply update the length field. And when you press tab, the offset fields will automatically be calculated and updated by the program. Continuing with our auto pipe model and our point A00, we will begin to create the piping model geometry. In this model, we want our point names to count by five, so we can update that in our Edit Model Options dialog box. We can click on Tools, Edit Options, and the third input down, we can change our default point name offset. By default, this is one, we will change it to five. As a note, there is the ability to use feet and inches as your display format for input fields. This is available when using English input units only. When this option is enabled, the coordinate and offset data will be displayed in a feet inch format in the dialog box, in the reports, and in the input grids. We can accept this by clicking OK. We see a warning dialog box pop up that reads the point name format or offset has been changed. Do you want the program to renumber the entire model after accepting this dialog? If you select yes, the entire model will be renumbered with the assigned point name offset. If you select no, the existing points that have been modeled will be left alone, but any points that will be added in after we accept this dialog box will be given names with the assigned point name offset. If you select Cancel, no points will be renumbered and the inputted point name offset will not be applied. So in our case, we will click Yes to Accept. And again, we get a second dialog box, which reads, Please note that renumber point does not update points in external loading files. Are you sure you want to continue? When renumbering, every point affected by this process might have a new point name. This command will only update the internal database and not any external load files such as time history, response spectrum, and other dynamic load files. Any external load files would have to be manually updated with the correct point names if the model is renumbered. In our case, we don't have any external loading files, so we will just click Yes to accept this. We'll start our piping model geometry by inserting a rigid anchor. We can come to our Insert ribbon and click on Anchor. And we'll insert this as a rigid anchor type with no thermal anchor movements. So we can simply click OK. The next component that we will insert is a T. So again, the Insert ribbon, we will click on our T piping component. This T will go in the X direction. So I'll tab down to my DX offset. Notice in the status bar that my units are in feet, and we want this to go 10 feet in the x direction. I'll update my dx offset. I'll tab, tab, and tab, and I see my length updates to 10 feet also. And I can click OK to accept this T dialog box. At this point, we can change the view mode. When we start modeling any new model in AutoPipe, the model will default be in single line view mode. If we come to the view tab, we can see in the mode section that we have the option for single line view, wireframe view, and solid model view. Here we'll keep our model in solid model view. 
Another nice option that we have on the view ribbon is the extent default ISO view. This is a good way to reset your model to a standard view after making changes or adding components. So we can click on the extent default ISO view. If I just close my input grid for right now, since I can only share one screen, we see that my T has three small blue arrows. And this allows me to continue to model the header and also to later model the branch line. We should notice down in the status bar that we are currently on point A5 on segment A, and we'll continue to model our piping geometry for our header pipe. The next component will be a bend, so back to our insert ribbon, let's insert a bend. The bend will start in the same direction that our T was traveling in, so we just need to update the length and our offsets will automatically be updated for us. We'll change the length here to 5 feet. When we press tab, you'll notice the DX offset is automatically changed to 5 feet. And we can accept this by clicking OK. Notice that the bend section of pipe that we just entered has some transparency applied. This is a nice trigger for the user to realize that we started to insert a bend and we need to finish that bend by telling the program what direction we're going to turn in and by how much. Once that's finished, we'll see that this piping will change back to the normal piping color. To fully understand how bends are modeled in Autopipe, please refer to the program help section and you can search for understanding bends which is located under the Getting Started and Autopipe Modeling Concepts section. We have to finish a bend with either a run or another bend. In this instance, we're going to finish this first bend by starting a second bend. So again, on the Insert ribbon, let's click on Bend. This will be changing direction. It will travel down three feet. So let's tab to our DY offset and plug in our negative three feet. If we press tab and tab, we'll see that our length is now updated to three feet, and we can accept this by clicking OK. We see that our first bend at point A10 is now finished, and we can see that because the piping is back to the normal piping color. The second bend at point A15 has some transparency applied because we started a second bend and we now need to finish that second bend. So we'll finish that second bend with a run that goes five feet in the Z direction. So on my insert ribbon, let's click on our run component. Again, we're changing direction, so let's tab to our DZ offset, plug in our five feet. When we tab off of DZ, we'll see our length gets updated to 5 feet, and we can click OK to accept this. This is the end of our header pipe, so we'll insert another rigid anchor. On the Insert ribbon, let's click on our anchor and accept this dialog box by clicking OK. Let's come back to our View tab and back to our default ISO view. Here we will begin to model the branch line of our T. We are going to be inserting a reducing T where our branch line is four inches. We can zoom into the area of our T at point A5 by using our view ribbon or the roll bar on our mouse. And we want to select the blue arrow that is out in white space perpendicular to our pipe. We can select it by clicking on it once, and you should see that the blue arrow turns red. You should also see that down in the status bar, your active point is still A5, but your active segment is now B. This means that when we start to model off of this point, we are actually going to be modeling segment B. Branch lines will always be assigned a new segment from the header. This is an automatic segment assignment. So our header was segment A, and our branch line will be segment B. We'll begin to model our branch line by inserting a run that goes up one and a half feet. So let's come to our insert ribbon and down to our run point. We need to assign the direction, so we'll tab to our DY offset and put in our 1.5 feet. 
And then when we tab down, we'll see our length updates to 1.5 feet also. And this is a four inch pipe, so we need to come to our pipe data identifier and we need to assign a new pipe data identifier. If the pipe data identifier has already been used in this model, you can simply pull down this menu and select it. This is a brand new pipe identifier for this model, so we need to actually enter it in. Continue with the same naming convention, we'll enter in for STD. We can accept this dialog box by clicking OK. And AutoPipe will realize that it doesn't recognize that pipe identifier for STD in this piping model. So it's going to bring up the pipe properties dialog box so that we can input the correct properties for this new pipe identifier. In this case, we're just going to tap down to the nominal diameter and we'll change it to four inches. And we can click OK. And we now see our point B5 of our branch line. We'll continue to model our branch with the next component being a bend going in the same direction, the same length of one and a half feet. So again, on our insert ribbon, let's click on bend. The length is already set to one and a half feet. So we can simply accept this and click OK. We'll finish this bend with a pipe run traveling two feet in the negative Z direction. So let's insert a run. Changing direction, so let's tab to our DZ offset and put in our negative two feet. And we can accept this dialog box. That finishes our bend, so all of our piping should be the same color. At this point, we're going to insert a flanged gate valve from the valve library. So on our insert ribbon, let's click on valve. When the valve component dialog box comes up, the user has the ability to enter in the manufacturer, standard, subcategory, type, main end, and pressure rating. And the library will automatically update the length, valve weight, and surface area factor. If the user needs to enter in some sort of a special or non-standard valve, you can use the auto pipe generic valve type and then manually input the data as necessary. In this case, we will use AutoPipe Generic. Standard is ANSI and ASME. This is a gate valve, again, a gate valve type. This is going to be a flanged valve with a pressure rating of 150. And from that, AutoPipe does have a generic library where it updates our length to 0.75 feet, our valve weight to 110 pounds, and our service area factor to 4.2. We'll leave the inputs from the valve library. The joint end type by default is weld neck, which we'll accept for this valve. The last thing we want to do is insert the pipe mating flanges. We have the ability to do this right in this dialog box. It will automatically assign the same pressure rating and joint end type to the mating flanges. If necessary, you can then update the mating flanges. So we will add in the pipe mating flanges by clicking on the insert flanges on both ends option. And we can click OK to accept the dialog box. If we zoom out just a bit, we see our valve in the model. Just a bit of discussion about our valves and our flanges. Flanges are modeled as single point components in AutoPipe that allow for the correct SIF and weight to be applied. In general, the construction of valves makes them significantly stiffer than pipes. The stiffness of the valve cannot be estimated without a detailed finite element analysis of the valve. For the purposes of piping design, valves are modeled as stiff pipes. In AutoPipe, a valve is modeled as 100 times stiffer than the pipe at the starting point of the valve. This is achieved by increasing the modulus of elasticity of the pipe, and then the specified weight is distributed evenly along the valve length. Let's finish this branch line by inserting another pipe run two feet in the same direction. So on our insert ribbon, let's click on run. The length is already set to two feet, so we can accept this and click OK. And then to finish, we'll insert another rigid anchor. This finishes the piping portion of our model. We can view defaults to see the entire model. And then let's click on File, Save.
If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.